I think it always affects you. I'm sure you've had the same experience when you have a big, big part and you're working every single day and it's kind of 18 hours a day and you're grappling with, with that character. It does it does af affect you for, sh for sure. You kind of don't know it on a conscious level, but on a kind of an emotional, kind of atomic level, it really, it really affects you. And, and in this movie, you know, the, the, the kind of moral dilemmas and the kind of paradoxes that the character was grappling with emotionally and morally and psychologically were f f huge. So it, do, it does take a, a toll, but in a, in, in a brilliant way. I'm not, I would never want to whinge about it. You know, it was, it was the biggest, uh, most exhilarating challenge. Yeah. He has this incredible ability, uh, the ability of a great actor to be empathetic with the audience, to, to allow them access to his feelings to his thoughts um, and that was really the journey we were on and, and the first thing I told him is I'm not looking for any kind of impersonation of the real life Oppenheimer. Um, use what works for you, use what helps you, you know, it gives you something to grab a hold of in the preparation. And weirdly when I first started asking questions, about, answering questions about this movie, everybody was asking me about the, the science part of it and I think that's the most, the, 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 the most exciting thing for me was like, it's a completely unique world, like despite them meeting in these places. Um, she really has nothing to do with the second chapter of what he decides to do. And that is also part of the downfall of her, is that she was excluded and left behind. And that, on top of depression, is obviously uh, a nasty cocktail. And Groves just was, uh, I just thought it was such a fascinating guy who never doubted what he was doing. Like, presented with the kind of most morally complex question maybe ever, and he just has no doubt. <laughs> He's like completely sure of himself. Um, and finally, I just love the fact that nobody liked him. You know, that was an interesting, and he didn't care. And so that's so always a fun thing. Life, yeah, I could relate. <laughs> and uh, I don't, there's no one really making films mm. kind of like Chris and the way he presents them and, you know, the way he's an incredible writer, amazing with, um, with actors, an incredible visual filmmaker. And then, like, the way he, he presupposes a level of intelligence in his audience. Mm. He never patronizes his audience. Mm. He, and uh, so it was, a, it was a gift, really. It's always been a gift for me every time I've worked with him. He's able to keep the set, even though I know that this film is so vast and so profound and sort of, it, it will be very lasting for people. I can see that, but on the set, it felt inviting and intimate and not overwhelming. And he speaks quietly, there's no chaos, he's like, curious, he's interested, and he's a great guy. Uh, my visual effects supervisor, Andrew Jackson, was one of the first people I showed the script to because he said, you're gonna see things in this script that we're gonna try to achieve, visualizations of the quantum world, leading up to their ultimate outward expression, you know, in, in the Trinity test of the first atomic device. Computer graphics might seem a natural way to do it, but I find that imagery to be lacking in threat. We wanted images that were beautiful and dangerous, expressive in some more analog sort of way. So I challenged him and his team, uh, who spent a long time figuring out different approaches to uh, achieving these effects, some very, very microscopic, some of them absolutely vast. And there's a combination of things and a confusion of scale around them, but I think that they gave us things that feel equal parts beautiful and dangerous. Yeah. He's, it, I, there's nobody working who does movies at this scale where the where the acting's so good and where yeah. he really understands the intimacy and the humanity of people and 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 but he also understands story and wants to ask big questions and his films are very ambitious but they're very human too and that's why people relate to them. It's just an incredibly dramatic story and, and when I got the opportunity to read American Prometheus, uh, a book that was 25 years in the writing. A really extraordinary piece of work uh, of great authority. It won a Pulitzer Prize. It had all this information. That gave me confidence finally to say, I think I can take on this most dramatic of stories because I think Oppenheimer's story is the most dramatic I've ever encountered. As a kid growing up in, in England, you know, in the early 80s, the concern with nuclear weapons, the pop culture was enormous. Um, my friends and I, we were 12 or 13 at the time, we all discussed and believed that, that we would probably die in a nuclear holocaust at some point. Uh, 